This tutorial series will take you from a complete beginner to an advanced level user of Studio One. A zero to hero guide if you will. This fourth video is an in-depth look at the piano roll. I've tried to cater for complete beginners but there's useful stuff in there for more experienced users too. As always I'll add extra bonus tips at the end of the video. Please like the video if you like the video, subscribe for more content, check out the links in the description and finally if you have any questions I'll try to answer them in the comments. You can compose music using the piano roll to input MIDI data. This MIDI data contains information about what notes to play, when to play them, how long to play each note for, and more. In a door such as Studio One, that MIDI data is then sent to a virtual instrument plugin. It tells the instrument what to play. To get to the piano roll, we first need an instrument and an instrument track. Click and drag an instrument from the browser to the timeline. I'm going to use the sampler instrument Presence that comes with Studio One. Let's select a preset and then close the instrument editor. Now double click on the timeline within our instrument track to create a MIDI clip, or as Studio One calls it, an instrument part. Double click again on the instrument part to open up the piano roll in the MIDI editor. You can open and close this by clicking Edit on the bottom right, or by pressing the keyboard shortcut F2. We can resize the editor window by clicking and dragging the edge here. You can also detach the window by clicking this symbol. Now you can drag it around or drag it to a second monitor, and you can click this to maximize the window. Click this symbol again to reattach the window. There's loads of different ways to zoom and scroll in Studio One. This time ruler corresponds to the time ruler in the main arrangement window. You can click and drag from it to zoom and scroll horizontally. Hold shift and click and drag from the keyboard notes to do the same, but vertically. You can also press the keyboard shortcuts W and E to zoom horizontally. Hold shift with W and E to zoom vertically. You can use these two sliders to zoom, and finally you can also hold control and scroll with the mouse wheel to zoom vertically. Click this symbol to synchronize the editor to the arrangement. Now zooming and scrolling horizontally will affect both views. The editor has a separate toolbar that works independently to the one in the main arrangement window. To draw in and arrange notes you'll either want to use the arrow tool or the paint tool. Which tool you use is down to personal preference. You actually never need to switch between the two because you can hold control on the keyboard to use the other tool. This is a more efficient way of working so I'd recommend getting used to it rather than switching back and forth between the tools. I always work with the arrow tool selected so that's what I'm going to show you in this video. To draw in a note, either double click or hold control and click. When inputting a note in this way, the length will be determined by your quantize setting. By default, the note will be auditioned when you draw it in, select it, or move it. To turn off this behavior, untick the box next to Audition Notes. You can still audition notes before drawing them in by clicking on the keyboard section. Before letting go of the mouse, you can drag horizontally to change the length of the note, and you can drag vertically to change the velocity. Exactly how the velocity changes the sound depends on the instrument, but the idea is that velocity represents how forcefully a note is played. At its simplest, a note played with more force will be louder. See how the colour of the note changes and this bar moves to represent the velocity. You can also see and alter the velocity of each note down here in the automation lanes, with the velocity tab selected. I'm not going to cover automation lanes in this video, but check out the previous video on automation if you haven't already. To input a line of notes, hold Ctrl and Alt, then click and drag. Again the length of the note is determined by the quantize setting. After inputting a note, now you can click a note to select it. Or you can click and drag an area from a blank space to select any notes in that area. Click and drag a note to move it around. 
While dragging a note, hold shift to toggle grid snapping. To change the length of a note, click and drag the edges. Again, holding shift will toggle grid snapping. To delete a note, either double click it, hold control and click on it, or press delete or backspace on the keyboard with your chosen note or notes selected. You can copy and paste by pressing Ctrl C and then Ctrl V to paste where the playhead is. Or you can hold either Ctrl or Alt, then click and drag. To duplicate, press D on the keyboard. With grid snapping turned on, the software will try to predict where you want the note to be placed, and it will always place the note so that it starts on the grid. If you don't want this behaviour, and you want the note to start immediately after the first, then you'll need to turn grid snapping off before pressing D. Do this by clicking here, or by using the keyboard shortcut N. You can transpose the selected note or notes by using the up and down arrow keys on your keyboard. This will move up or down by a semitone. For an octave, hold shift. The left and right arrow keys are to select the next or previous note. Hold shift to add to the selection. Hold alt to nudge the selected note or note. With grid snapping enabled, they'll move by the quantized value. With it off, they'll move by a tiny amount with each press. This is useful if you want a note to play slightly off grid. Hold control and press the arrow keys to scroll. When resizing multiple notes, there's a few different keyboard modifiers. Hold Alt to stretch. Hold Control to set all notes to have a common length. Or hold Control and Alt to set them all to have a common end point. If you know what scale you want to work in, you can choose that here. When you tick the box next to scale, you'll see that all the notes in that scale are now marked in blue. With this enabled, any notes that are inputted will snap to a note in the chosen scale. Also, when you click and drag a note, it will snap. You can still use the arrow keys to transpose by just a semitone though. You can mute and solo the instruments here. Change this to set the default velocity that notes will be drawn with. This section here is to do with MIDI recording from a hardware MIDI controller or keyboard. Down here is all the relevant information to the selected note. So the notes start and end point, length, pitch and velocity. You can also mute the selected note here. The keyboard shortcut for this is Shift and M. If you have multiple MIDI clips on one track, they'll show like this in the editor. You can edit all from the same view. You can also edit multiple MIDI clips from different tracks in one view. To do this, select the clips that you want to edit from the main timeline using the arrow tool. If the editor window is already open, then you'll see all the different MIDI parts appear. If not, you'll need to double click to open. If there's a part that you want to exclude, then hold shift and click on the clip to remove it from the selection. Then double click on one of the selected clips again. To make it easier to view all the separate instruments, we can change the note colour setting to part. Now the notes will match the colour of the track that they're on. We can change the track colour here. This button here opens up the track list. Notice how our already selected tracks are enabled. The circle on the left is to show or hide the MIDI on that track, and the little pen or pencil symbol on the right enables editing for that track. We can close the track list by hitting this symbol again. You can also select the track that you want to edit with this drop down. That brings us to our first bonus tip. Now this is great for composing music with lots of instruments, for example orchestral music. Start by loading in all the instruments you think you'll use. Name and colour the tracks accordingly.
Then draw in MIDI clips to cover the whole song for every track. Now open up the piano roll, detach and maximize. Now open up the track list. Show every track by clicking on this circle. You don't need to select everyone individually, just click from the top and drag all the way to the bottom. Now select the instrument that you want to edit in the track list and start composing, all within the MIDI editor. You can even save templates with different instrument setups, so you can open up the song and start composing immediately. Bonus tip number two, to draw in triplet notes, instead of changing the grid size, drawing the notes in, and then changing it back, a quicker way to do this is to use Control alt click and drag to draw three notes in, then hold ALT, click and drag to stretch to the grid. Now we've got triplet notes. Bonus tip number three. To quickly create arpeggios, use the line draw feature with your chosen scale selected. There are a few things that I haven't mentioned. For example, the action menu where you can perform different functions, the quantize panel and macros. I'll be covering these in future videos. So that's just about everything you need to know about the piano roll in Studio One. If you want to see more Studio One tutorials, then check out, check out this playlist. And if you want to see me actually making music in Studio One, then check out this playlist. Subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you'd like me to cover in a future video. Keep smiling. Studio One gang. Sound.